Hi everyone, The Mature Simmer here. Welcome to another map tour. Today I'm going to take a look at Shellbrook Creek, Saskatchewan, from Camel Farms or Camel Mapping. If you are a fan of Canadian maps, you may have played Peace River, which was an FS19 map that Camel made as well, that was pretty well received. When you download this pack, it's on Facebook, you're going to get a zip file that's going to contain quite a few things. You're going to have 17 files in total. So when you load the map, it's important that you include all the mods. So as mentioned, when you're loading this map, there's a significant amount of additional mods that come with it. So the entire pack, when you unzip it, has 17 files. Canada Farmhouse, Decoration, it's a decoration pack by Camille, so definitely that's one you need. Farmhouse set, JMF's tea stall, Meridian grain bin, two versions of Meridian storage, placeable 72 by 150 buildings pack, placeable dry storage shed 90 by 200, placeable silos, and then another placeable silos. The ranch set from Elk Mountain Ranch. The seed buying station. Crooked Creek Modding Shed with Office. Spray Tank. TMR Mixing Silos. And then, of course, the map itself. That gets you 17 mods. All right, so when you load up the map, this is where you spawn. You're in Canada, so you've got to have a Tim Hortons. So you're in the parking lot here. Looks like we're close to the edge of the map as far as what we can tell. So the other thing, uh, just because Canada is usually big farms, big fields, big maps, uh, this is new farmer mode. I haven't touched anything yet at this point. So that two and a half million that you see there is in fact what you start with. If you decide to start in the other two modes, a farm manager, you'll get one and a half million. And if you do start from scratch, you'll get one million. This is also a map that uses DEM or digital elevation map data. Let me get out of there before that car runs us over. This is based on a real location. Again, Shelbrook, Saskatchewan, taking a look at a real map and looking around a little bit. It looks like it's a little north of Saskatoon. It's about 593 or 600 kilometers north of a town close to the Montana border. So uh, it's pretty far north. It's basically about the same north location as Edmonton, to give you an idea. And some things I found out about it is this had this town had a population of 1,433 in the most recent uh, census data that was provided. So this is not a big town, but this is where you can begin your farming. Uh, so let's uh, hop over and take a look at the PDA. So here we are in the PDA. It's most of Camel's maps, they're large. This is a 4X map, so it's not as large as Peace River, which was larger than that. But it's still a pretty good size to get going on and certainly can give you the feeling of working in Canada. One of the things he did here, and one of the reasons I wanted to showcase it, is it is his first map for FS22. Peace River was an FS19 map. You can see, once again, uh, not a lot of fields, but they're going to be likely pretty large, and we'll take a look at that as we explore the PDA. The other thing that they mentioned is there's definitely productions available on the map to take advantage of some of the FS22 features, and there's also anhydrous on the map if you're interested in using that. So let's zoom in here a little bit, otherwise we're likely going to have a bit too much to select. So there's biogas, vehicle shop, it's propane in a gas station, anhydrous, the spray tank, which was one of the mods, silo for the seeds, grain mill, cereal factory, dairy, a grain elevator, debris crusher, GSI complex, oil mill, biomass heating, carpentry. And then we've got the grocery mart, the supermarket again. We're, we're obviously here blinking, so this is where we've started up by the, the Tim Hortons, which I think is the fast food restaurant, as it's labeled on the map. All right, and here we've got a grain elevator, some, a couple silos. So this is where we can get fertilizer, 
seeds. I believe there's lime down here too from some comments I've seen. On the Facebook page, I believe this is going to be our farm. And in fact, yeah, we can see we own fields 14 and 15. So we'll take a look at it in detail, but lots of silos, uh, lots of silos. We've got an animal dealer over here. So we own a couple fields. We'll zoom back out. So let's take a look. So yes, we own 14, 15, and it looks like a few random splotches up here as well. But if we take a look at that, you can see that's 158 acres. I know it's a little difficult to see on the overlay. 162 acres, 153. This one's 307 acres for 745,287 acres, I believe. I'm having a hard time reading it. 214 for 520. So field prices are not uh, astronomical. So again, you can own a 21 acre field for 52,000, a 32 acre field for 77, almost a 40 acre field for 92. So you can get started uh, with quite a few things. Again, you've got two and a half million, but you also don't have any equipment, I believe, is what he mentioned. But before we take a look at that, we'll take a look at the crop calendar, because this is a unique crop calendar that has been changed for the Great Canadian North. So you've got basically your crops getting planted in spring and then harvested later in the year for those who kind of like custom calendars. And if we look here in productions, in new farmer mode here, you can see that we do own most of the productions, if not all of them, on the map. So you're able to immediately utilize them on your farm. We'll take a quick look at the selling situation on the map. So again, several grain elevators, the complex grain mill, so four different places to sell the grains. Some additional things for oats where you can go to the cereal factory. It doesn't look like the GSI complex is actually a sell point. That may be uh, where our silo is. What I've seen on some of Camille's maps is that's how it needs to be set up so that you can use the silo appropriately. Several places for grapes and olives, sunflower, soybeans, corn, potatoes, sugar beet, biogas will take cut sugar beets. You can sell your cotton, your sugar cane, all of your animal products. And then obviously again the biogas and then we've got the TMR mixer silos which are one of the mods that, that you downloaded with the zip file. And then as far as the production items you can see there are places to sell your production items. So they've taken some time, made sure that this was quote unquote FS22 ready. And then again we talked about anhydrous, propane, and Looks like we've got a corn dryer because we can do dry corn as well. All right, so just to verify, just to make sure, as you go here, owned items, you do own nothing. So there are three farms you can start with on the map, besides from the starting farm here. There's one down here, there's one down here. They each have a farmhouse. So there's farmhouse 02, farmhouse, and then, uh, you know, a different farmhouse there but you've got silos and so forth that exist, barns, uh, you know, petrol tanks, fuel, and so forth. So you've got a couple locations you can begin in depending on what you'd like to do if you don't start within the new farmer mode. So I've hopped on down here to the farmhouse. So you can see we've got field 14 over there uh, through the trees. Got a couple saddles up on the poor trail here, our sleep point there. And Camille, Camel usually does a good job. Uh, we got another sleep point, well, one may be a wardrobe point, one may be a sleep point. So let's take a look and see what we've got. All right, so that's wardrobe. I think it's a wraparound porch, but let's take a look. Well, not quite, but we've got stairs down here, so. That's all right. 
if we come up here. All right, so that's our sleep point by the main doors. And then you've got the wardrobe, uh, I guess I'd say around back, because this definitely looks like the front of the house to me. You got a satellite dish so you can watch some TV. I'm sure that's pretty standard up in northern Canada. Looks like we're in the middle of some yard work here. So, uh, you know, Canadian maps, nothing if not big. So uh, just, you know, be aware that you're going to be running around a bit. I must admit I'm not familiar with the flags, but I'm going to guess that's the Saskatchewan flag. I can't, can't guarantee it. Don't hold me to it. So that's our liquid fertilizer tank. Got a couple silos here. I'm sure these are our grain bins. And we've got, as you can see, many others there. So we are certainly set up here for some significant farming and some significant volume. So I know Peace River, you needed to make it realistic You're, if you were playing in, on your own and not playing with, uh, with others. I'm trying to open the door here. I'm not... Let's see on a trigger. Pull up my menu so that I can see. We might need to go inside and do it that way. So yeah, it looks like... Um, okay, it lets me turn on the lights. And there we go. We can open the door there. So you've got the giant bifold doors, which are common if you're going to be using massive size equipment. So that shed there has got some sliding doors. We've got the fuel tank. And I think that gives us pretty much the layout of uh, what we have available to us here. Let me just make sure. Yeah, that's the farmhouse over there. So that is what we've got. Alright, so we're going to do this a little out of sequence here from what I've done in the past. So I've gotten us a pickup, had plenty of money to go ahead and buy something. So we're up here at the vehicle shop, which is up at the north end near town, but this is going to then give us some feel for just kind of how large this map is and how spread out it is. And it's also going to give us some good visuals on uh, just, you know, the, the quality of design, which is usually pretty good. And once again, if it's since it's a dem map, uh, you know, we're going to have a little bit of terrain, I would assume, but I'm not sure how flat this part of Canada is. It's usually, you know, Peace River was pretty flat. Alright, so he's got the baseball stadium moved over here from Elm Creek. A couple of them, actually. So we've got a baseball complex. And then we've got our productions spaced out here. Once again, placed uh, pretty nicely. Shellbrook. There you go, Shellbrook Parkland. Health region. Saskatchewan Canola. There's the flag again, which, as I said, you know, is likely to be the Saskatchewan flag. I don't know why it would be anything else where we're at. So, yeah, we've got a 45-acre wheat field here. Just kind of trying to get some perspective of, of what we're looking at. All right, so we need to head back and then go down the road south to get to our homestead. So let's do that and we'll see what we see on the way down. And we will do a quick uh, you know, flying tour on the map but obviously there's not that many fields and it's just going to be a lot of wide open space which would be typical I would assume. So, uh, here's your anhydrous. 
And here's our main road. Again, Shellbrook's not very big, so I'm assuming that's what we've got up here. And then we're dealing with all the fields that are south of town. So we've got some water there moving along. Again, vast, vast stretches of farmland. So we got field eight over here to the right. Don't know what field number is over to the other side. I know, um, you know I think we've got some other farms available if you'd like to start somewhere else. So here you go, we've got the Ravenwood farm. So uh, I think that's a vehicle workshop and some silos, but you, know, you could set yourself up here if you'd prefer not to start at the starting farm. I'm just not sure. I guess it's some different crops. I thought maybe it was all wheat. Alright, so we're coming up on our farm here. And so there you go, it'll be Camel Farms. And it looks like both our fields are ready for planting. We don't have any anything already there. We've got a little bit of a pioneer sign out there. So again, field 15, 114 acres, and this field up here, a little under 6. So it gives you a little bit of perspective of what we're looking at. But you're definitely looking at, you know, some big farming if we take a look at this. Alright, so I'm back on the map. And one of the things that someone has done is they do have an auto drive network put together for this map, which is awesome given the size of it. So I've gone ahead and gotten the network, uh, you know, picked up and launched here. So I'm heading down to, as you can see, field 25. So yes. Yeah, um, you know, driving me around quite a bit. I'm not quite sure how good the network is, because it's telling me it's going to take me eight minutes, and 25 was actually south of here, so there may be a little bit of a broken link here or there that, uh, you know, will cause some things to be a little bit different in how they'd function. So once again, um, you know, we've come up this way from the town, but it looks like it's going to take us down this road. So we're going to head down, uh, I guess, where the river is. But it'll give us a little bit of a view in other areas of of the map. So let me hide that away so that we're not looking at too many things that are distracting. But, you know, the map is, you know, I think well designed as, as everything I've seen that Kamel does is. He's been pretty responsive to changes. Again, this is version 3. And I think he put out the first version, uh, you know, at, in January at some point. So it hasn't been out extremely for an extremely long time. And he's been taking feedback, you know, if there's bugs here and there, to get things changed. So, looks like we're headed over to a section of the map here. We're going to turn right, and then we'll go down by some other areas. Yeah, it looks like the TMR silo, or... or the silo of, that we've got. Um, but yeah, so, you know, there is a way if you if you like to load, if you're willing to load the auto drive network, it'll 
give you that capability. So, yeah, there's a, another farm there. Got some solar panels. But, you know, well designed if you like the Canadian farming. And very typical in what I've seen from this modder. So, um, you know, it's definitely something worth taking a look at. And I will let this, you know, drive for a little bit. But not much else to to show. So the one thing that, you know, I would need to try uh, for a single player, um, you know, I think you'd need course play and preferably course play with multiple combine capability and so forth. Uh, and I've not seen yet that we're there yet. But I think if you keep this map in mind for something like that, it would definitely be a very pleasurable experience to to utilize because the thing I like about this one Peace River was much more uh, rectangular fields I mean there were definitely different shaped fields here and there uh, but it it didn't have the variety that that this location has so I do like those differences here and definitely uh, you know something that's that's interesting okay so those points on the map are auto drive points because um, this is field 25 here so there you can see we've reached field 25 but you know the network that's pre-built here will get you all the fields and then the various areas um, you know that you might want to go ahead and drive to as well that are included on the map all right so I'm gonna go up in the air here we're gonna just take a look and move around I mean, it's certainly bigger than a base map. Um, we're not going to get fields that large, that many, on a base map. So it looks like we've got another farm here, and I'm going to do most of my traversing around on um, using flight mode just because of the reality of the size here. Um, otherwise, uh, driving is going to take us a little bit of time. So... Let me just drop down, and I've got myself at 15 times speed, so... But here is another farm that you could consider utilizing. You know, you do have some other area here that you can definitely work on. Alright, uh, let's go back to, so that we're at the same, I think... Yeah, okay, we're at 15 speeds, so I guess I probably wasn't quite that fast before. And this gets us down to the south end. You know, there's usually some pretty good, as far as visual edges, again, um, you know, we've got some elevation on, on the map here, where you can obviously see there's uh, not the same terrain with the outlying edges to create some continuity, but um, you know, just letting you see what the map looks like from that perspective. And once again, you know, it's definitely some vast fields. So we're talking about 141 acres here. At this point, I think, yeah, we're at eight speed. So if we go up to 15 speed, yeah, we're moving. A little bit. It's 134. There's that farm we were at. Looks like we've got some. I don't know. There's truly a lake versus like a swamp in the middle of the field. 132. But yeah, while it is dem data, um, looks very similar to Peace River, which was also in Saskatchewan for the with the regard of being relatively flat, uh, which I think is just what you're getting, uh, you know, in Canada. So here we're back up near the town. We've got some water, the biogas plant. It's the vehicle shop we started with on the truck. Flying over on the town again, you know, kind of showing. You've got some industry here at the edge with the road. Um, you got the piece that kind of drives you off there. 
no clear connection to the dirt road in the back. Uh, you know, that might be a little nicer to see, but this may be modeled on a more real-world road network of what they have, so that may be why he did that. So, pretty big water feature here. So yeah, 248 acres, definitely not a small field. And then we're at the other end of the map. There's another farm here. I'm going to take a look at that. Looks like we've got a sign, so let's see. See what we've got. Just slowing me down. I may have slowed myself down too much. Yep. So if we go to standard speed, so this is Canadian beef, so yeah, I think this is, yeah, it's clearly lined up to be cows, so if you want to do that, we've got, you know, um, what look to be some cattle out here in the field. They may be placeables. They don't appear to be moving. Oh, this is the animal dealer. That's right, that was what was out here. So yeah, we don't have any farms, but if we wanted to buy them, he's got... Okay, so this is the animal dealer. I do recall that now on the PDA. And once again, um, we'll move along. We've got, what, 102. It's definitely a lot of these, um, you know, water areas. I assume that's what's up in this space. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have modeled it that way. So, yeah, here is another farm for certain. Uh, U.S. flag on the silo. Probably not what a good Canadian farmer would want, but... Uh, I'm sure that's the mod that was there, and rather than repainting the map, or the flag, you know, that certainly is fine. It's not like maybe they haven't bought something from an American supplier, and maybe that silo just came that way. I'm sure you can describe it any way you'd like. But... You know, definitely a lot of fields to work here. And so if we can get course play, so um, yeah, this was the farm we had stopped at and taken a look around, and then our farm is up here. So it looks like for the most part we start out with um, fields that are basically ready to be planted. The other farmers have already gone ahead and planted their stuff. Um, you know, given that it's fall, if you kind of stuck with what the timing was, didn't fast forward, you know, you'd have some time to get your fields ready, get your farm ready, and so forth. So that should give you a pretty good idea of what this map looks like. Okay, so after doing a little bit of work and doing a little bit of setup uh, and getting the latest version of course play that's available, which is dot twenty eight so seven dot twenty eight uh, um, we do have a situation where I can do course play with multiple implements, so what I've gone ahead is purchased a couple harvesters just to test this out set them up with a course and as you can see we've got both of them harvesting field seven here so we are in a position it appears where as a single player you can actually do some pretty good things on the course or, or on the map here if you'd like to utilize some automation. Once again, um, you know, I kind of toss this together quickly. I'm noticing I think the harvesters are getting a little closer together than I might like, 
but uh, you know there might be some adjustment I need to do to the course but the good news is they do appear to be operating as I would have expected from FS19 and so uh, you know depending on how many you can afford and so forth and and once again you can determine how you set up your money and what you do with that um, you could get whoops I'm gonna go this way I guess because you can see we we had a little bit of the field dropping down there but we can have them running together and so I've got this doing a couple headlands which I don't know that I necessarily would need to do normally with two harvesters like this um, but yeah there we go it's making the turn this one should then obviously make the turn as well and you know probably you know I can do some adjustments because I think I just left it at smooth or rounded corners so obviously I'm leaving some crop on the field um, well, and then with the terrain there obviously it the header missed some sections so that's just the normal issues you're going to have with, with fields and so forth but with the dem map um, you know it's using that realistic leveling that exists so yeah it looks like these houses are maybe put down a little lower and so forth but I'm pretty excited to see that we're able to do this on I mean it'd be any map but for a map of this size unless you're going to use it as a multiplayer map uh, you really need something like this to be operating so um, I just did want to demonstrate and show you that we are at a position at this point that you would be able to work these fields that way in single player it appears so a massive hurdle for things like this and other maps that I've looked at that were large like Hastings uh, North Dakota and so forth so yeah as the harvesters continue to work the field basically then um, you know using auto drive to unload your combines you could fully automate a field harvest I mean it might take a little bit of work there may still be some quirks between auto drive and course play and so forth um, but you could certainly make the attempt to do that if nothing else you could certainly let these harvesters run you could drive the truck yourself manually and let it go ahead and do that work and so you can keep an eye out on the channel certainly I'll definitely be doing um, an advanced course play tutorial on how to set up something like this with multiple implements running together if you don't know how to do that uh, but I'll definitely uh, show you how to do that and as far as setting up uh, auto drive to unload a combine that already exists out on the channel and I'll link the card here in the video so that you can get to that and get that portion under your belt if you're not sure how to do that so my wrap up of the what I think and what I play the map uh, definitely an interesting thing to delve into especially if you're looking for something in Canada is this is the first really focused FS22 Canadian map that has come out you've got aside from you know the base farm you've really got you know one two and three different main locations that you could take a look at uh, you know and the productions are built into the map as well so there's definitely a lot of opportunity to do you know, just a lot of different type of things I mean and I love the fact that it has the dem layout so you can see here as you're you know just looking out over the fence you've got a little bit of roll to the terrain 
It's not just a flat, flat map. And I think Camel's done a great job with uh, you know, just making it look like a, a really fun place to be. Um, you know, the trees spread out. It just looks like a, a well-done map that has got uh, some character to it for certain. So, hope you've enjoyed this tour. If you have, certainly uh, please like the video. As always, please subscribe so that you can get notified as new things appear on the channel. Uh, definitely now that I know I've got course play working and so forth, I think we're ready to tackle some other things again. Uh, I'm feeling like, you know, we finally might be at a point with FS22 where it's getting to be a realistic alternative to FS19 for my style of, of gameplay that I prefer in single player and just kind of giving me the options. Certainly some more equipment mods would be nice, but I know those will be coming over time. So without going off track too much, we'll go ahead and we'll you know, wrap this up here from Shellbrook, Saskatchewan. And I will see you next time.